Thermometers on your still. Why you don't need them, but they're kind of nice to have. And the traps, the traps that new distillers fall into when thinking about thermometers. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is Still It, the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. All right guys, thermometers. Uh, why are we talking about thermometers? Well, uh, I get a bunch of questions asking why I don't have a thermometer on my still. And that's not true. I've actually got a bunch of thermometers throughout the distillery, but on my main pot still setup, I do not have a thermometer uh, up, up the top in the vapor path. I just, I just don't, and I don't need one. I've got thermometers in different places throughout the distillery, uh, but I guess I just don't show them off in videos that much because they're not a, they're not a big deal to me. They're not a big part of my workflow. Uh, so I wanna talk about that. But really quickly, let's talk about different places where you could put a thermometer. Uh, and in my mind, there's really two that stand out as being worthy of this discussion, right? when we're talking about the still itself. Obviously for mashing and all that sort of stuff, we want thermometers, but let's talk about the stills. Number one, uh, if you're gonna put a thermometer anywhere, you're gonna put it up at the top of your still at the point of no return. So the place where uh, if the vapor passes, it is heading to your collection jar 100%. So that's uh, number one. So normally on the line arm or very close to the line arm. Uh, number two is uh, down under the liquid level in the pot itself. So those are the two that I would uh, say are worth discussing at this point in time. You can use others of course, but for now, let's talk about those. First of all, let's focus on uh, by far the most popular, which is the one at the top of the still uh, at the point of no return. And before we go anywhere, before we talk about anything, I wanna talk about traps. The reason that these things are overvalued in the hobby and the reason that they cause especially new distillers to waste a lot of time that they could have used elsewhere to really learn what's happening in their still and because of that create a better product so just yesterday i put a video out you can check it out up here if you want to go see that now and uh, this video is not it's not really related but the reason i reference it is that in that video we talk about the temperature that a certain abv solution in the pot will boil at. If you've got a 6% wash in your pot, it's gonna boil at a certain temperature. If you've got 25% low wines in your pot, it's gonna boil at a certain temperature. And honestly, there's only two things you can do to change that. One is change the chemical composition of the solution. Uh, and two is uh, fuck with the pressure, I guess, change the pressure. Is there any others? I don't think there is. Tell me if there's others that I've missed it. <laughs> What I'm saying is guys, that when it comes to operating your still, you have zero control whatsoever over the temperature that that solution is gonna boil at. And as it boils, it's boiling off the more volatile compounds, which means that um, an instant later, it's gonna boil at a slightly higher temperature. Nothing you can do about it, absolutely nothing. I will concede that by the time you get up to the top of your still, uh, there are certain things that we can do to the still to change the temperature of uh, the vapor hitting the top, and that is reflux. We can change the amount of reflux, uh, the amount of inter interaction between vapor and liquid, and that is going to, um, the, the more reflux we have, the lower the temperature is gonna be at the top of the still. In the case of a pot still, all we have is passive reflux, and the smaller amount of passive reflux we're getting is completely and utterly dwarfed by the impact of the percentage of the solution in the pot. So yes, with a reflux still, we could detune it and you know send no reflux down the column and that would be very different. But in normal operation, operating within sort of standard parameters for your still, there's still a relatively small zone that you're gonna be hitting. There is a whole lot of information out there on uh, at the beginning of the run, your temperature should be this. Uh, midway through the run, your temperature should be that. And do this until the temperature hits this. And that, the, the thing is guys, that it is just not an accurate way to do what is best for you in your situation with your still and more specifically the wash that you've got. And the reason for that is every time you make a different wash, every time you use a different still, every time you're creating a slightly different product, the, uh, the very best target temperature that you need to hit is gonna be slightly different. 
It's, it's just going to change. And for that reason, there is absolutely no situation where I would say, where I would suggest that you should be making what I call flavor decisions based on the temperature. And what I mean by that is um, making cuts based on the temperature you see at the top of the still. And all of this advice goes exactly the same. I would give exactly the same advice for ABV. So making cuts with a parrot or with, you know, with an alchemeter collecting samples and stuff, making decisions on when to make cuts, what to keep, what to not keep, based on the ABV that's coming out of the end of the still is just, it, it is an inferior way to do it compared to doing it with your senses. So use your sight, look at what it looks like, smell it, taste it, feel it. All of these things are just better tools for deciding the best spirit that you can make with what you have in front of you. Now, I will caveat that with saying, if what your definition of the best spirit is, is something that is as tasty as it can be, and suited as well as it could be to your preference or to the goal that you're trying to create, I stand by what I just said 100%. If your goal is to crank product out with as little effort as possible or to um, make the ABV really consistent between, you know, any of those things, yeah, I'll, I'll, whatever. If that's what you're into, that's cool. That's not what this channel is about. This channel is about chasing the craft of home distillation, which means making the very best product that you can for you in terms of flavor. So to summarize this up, guys, Every time you make a wash, it's going to be different. Even if you make exactly the same recipe twice in a row, maybe it got some wild yeast in there. Maybe it didn't ferment out quite as dry as the last one. Um, maybe you put an extra 200 grams of corn in there and your uh, original gravity was slightly higher. All of these little variables are going to change what can happen on the still. And they might seem like little things, but they add up. So rolling by numbers, whether it be uh, ABV coming off the spout tested with an alchemeter or rolling by numbers with uh, temperature at the top of the still is just not a consistent way to get the very best out of what it is that you're making. All right, so that's the trap team, that's the trap. New distillers fixate on it. And I think the reason they fixate on it is it is a quantifiable number, right? I can say uh, my still is currently at 82 degrees Celsius and that means something specifically for you, wherever you are. Whereas if I'm making cuts and saying, you know, weird tasting notes, it's more eerie fairy. So I get, I get why new distillers can gravitate towards it sometimes. But guys, please just cut the cord, get off the temperature tit. And, uh, and move on and you will become a better distiller, I promise you. That's why I don't have a thermometer at the top of my pot still. Every time I make something, it's different. Every time I go about something, it's for a different reason, it's for a different goal, it's something different. Uh, and the idea of using temperature to make flavor decisions, it's just ridiculous. It just, it just doesn't work. On a small home distilling scale, it's just so much easier to make those decisions based on your senses. But I do have thermometers around the place. And to be fair, I didn't go out of my way to put these anywhere. They just sort of came with equipment or they were already installed on a piece of equipment when it turned up. Uh, but I have a thermometer at the top of the stripping column for the Genio, which is the oil jacketed still. I've got a thermometer at the top of the plated still after the last plate. And I also have a thermometer now in my pot for my 50 liter keg still. And I will be honest with you guys, it is nice to have them, but it's nice in a logistics way. It makes it easier for me to know what's happening at a glance. So let's talk about those and why I like them and why eventually I probably will put a thermometer at the top of my pot still. So, I mean, pot stills first. A thermometer at the top of a pot still at the point of no return. Honestly, the main reason I like this is simply to know roughly where I am at a point in a run, and the main time I like that is during a stripping run. So I can whack stuff into the pot, I can let it rip away, and at a glance I can look at the temperature at the top of the still and know roughly, you know, when I'm looking at cutting it off. So I can look at it, so I can look at the temperature and go, oh, that's still really low, I've still got an hour left, at least in this stripping run. Um, you know, I'm gonna clean some cuts jars on the sink next to it while I'm, you know, waiting. Or I can look at it and go, oh, that's at, uh, you know, 97 degrees now, that's, uh, that's getting pretty low. I should probably think about what I'm gonna do in terms of when I'm gonna shut it down and when I'm gonna move on, so on and so forth. 
like I said, it's, it's not that I'm making decisions, oh, my distill has reached 97 degrees Celsius, I must stop the stripping run because it will taste bad. It's just that, oh yeah, I think I'm getting close to collecting enough alcohol, I'll run it for a little bit longer and um, you know, then we'll call it quits. The other reason it's nice to have a thermometer at the top of the still is to know when the still is warming up. So you know, oh yes, the thermometer says I'm almost uh, at temperature to start collecting first drips. I'm going to give the still 110% focus over the next 15 minutes to make sure that it, um, you know everything's set up properly, nothing's leading the leaking, the water's turned on, so on and so forth. Uh, with a plated still, this becomes for me even more important because when you're playing that little dance of getting the vapor speed and condensing, you know, power or knockdown power in balance, you can sit there and look at the temperature gauge sitting right above the deflagonator and you can see when it starts to move up, oh yes, vapor's making it through the deflag right now. Uh, I think I'm in the right spot. Or the temperature goes whoomph, <laughs> and you know, oh, maybe I need to put a little bit more water into that thing. But once again, here's the thing guys, that doesn't make a huge difference to how I do things. I can just put my hand on it, I can touch it and feel whether or not it's getting hot or cold. Sure, it's not as accurate, it doesn't give you the sort of the velocity in terms of a visual stimulus, <laughs> It's the same thing. It's not about a flavor decision, it's just about making the logistics of running the still slightly easier. And let's talk finally about the thermometer down in the pot and why I like that one. Uh, simply put, this is really nice in terms of heat up times. So I can walk in here, I can fill my pot up with 50 liters of liquid, I can turn the elements on and I can piss off off to the other side of the shed for about half an hour, I know that I'm safe for about half an hour, um, you know, I can do a little bit of work over there, I can tidy up, I can do whatever I need to do, and I can stroll back five paces towards the boiler, check the thermometer really quickly from, you know, five or six meters away, oh yeah, we're good, we're still at 60 degrees, I've got a little bit more time, and back off I go. Once again, it's just a nice logistics thing, it doesn't make flavor decisions for me, it doesn't tell me how to run the still, it just makes the <laughs> the, actually what it is is most of these things are the waiting time, the uh, concentration needed to specifically know what's going on in the still decreases slightly. And I'm always scared of saying things like that because you should be watching your still all the time. But let's face it dude, if you're in the, in the distillery for 12 hours you want to be able to do something else other than just sit there and twiddle your thumbs. <laughs> I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons. I get to do this stuff because of you and I thoroughly, thoroughly freaking appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, if you out there in internet land are finding value in these videos and you would like to help contribute directly to the channel as well, please go to chasethecraft.com slash support to find out all the different ways you can hold, hold out, help out. <laughs> what am I talking about? Uh, one of them is Patreon, if it's right for you. All right team, so I know this was a little bit ranty, uh, but it is a interesting topic with different aspects to it. So I hope it helps some people out. If you think that I've missed something along the way, by all means, drop a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know how you use your thermometers, uh, why you think they're helpful, why you think they're a waste of time, whatever it happens to be, uh, have your say down below. That's the cool thing about something like this, as long as everyone is respectful to each other, we can all have our own opinions uh, and just because I think that a certain idea is silly doesn't mean that I think you are silly. Does that make sense? I respect you, I think you're an awesome person as long as you act with respect down there. Um, but we can disagree on ideas and that's cool. I'm saying this because uh, I see that disappearing in this world and it scares the living fuck out of me. So uh, if we can hold it true for one little hobby on one little channel on YouTube, maybe, maybe, just maybe that can uh, help other people out in different parts of life as well. Anyway guys, if you liked the video, please, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a whole lot. If you like this video and you're not subscribed, you want to know more about distilling, chasing the craft of home distillation, hit the subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell, and I will catch you guys next time. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.